Welcome. So today we're going to look at information texts and we're going to look at what if you had an animal tale by Sandra Markle and Howard McWilliams. And the book looks like this. And it's great to be able to start with a new kind of book. Information texts are designed to inform. And this one is great because it uses a fictional idea of humans with animal characteristics to give you a lot of true information about different types of animals. So this book is not only an information text, but it's also for entertainment. So it has two purposes. Some books are written that way. This book is also an information text, Dogs on Duty. It is written more in, um, I would say, like a manual style with images. It's pure nonfiction. It's all fact. Nothing is made up to give you the, to convey the information. Okay, so different information books use different features to catch your, in, uh, your um, attention. So, what if you had an animal tale by Sandra Markle and Howard McWilliam? What if one day you woke up threw back the covers and got out of bed. Something felt different. What if overnight you'd grown a wild animal's tail? Uh-oh. Check that out. Peacock. A male peacock has a tail with feathers up to six feet long that can fan across its back. The feathers have eye-like spots in beautiful colors like blue, green, and gold. This bird sheds and regrows its tail feathers each year just in time for the mating season. The peacock uses them to win a female mate called a peahen. The bigger the fan tail and the more eye spots displayed, the better the peacock's chances of gaining a mate. Fact. Each peacock's tail has its own special pattern of eye spots and shimmering colors. If you had a peacock's tail, fans would always flock to see you. So I can tell this is a modern book because they're using cell phones to take the pictures. Okay, that'd be kind of crazy to have a peacock's tail. But the fact about the different shimmering, the shimmering colors and the eye spots and all that is true. That's fact. South African ground squirrel. A South African ground squirrel's long bushy tail is a built-in sun umbrella. The squirrel uses its tail for shade since there are few trees or bushes in the dry places where it likes to live. This squirrel usually spends the day searching for seeds and small plants to eat, but in the summer the temperatures can get up to 114 degrees Fahrenheit. So. The squirrel turns its back to the sun and curls its long tail over its head. Then it has its own personal shade. Fact. When a South African ground squirrel sees a cobra, it waves its bushy tail and the snake leaves it alone. If you had a South African ground squirrel's tail, you'd never need to bring an umbrella to the beach. So here's that South African ground squirrel. And there it is with the cobra. And ha ha, there we are at the beach. That's pretty interesting. Scorpion. A scorpion's tail and body have an armor coat called an exoskeleton. Its tail is also tipped with a deadly stinger. When the scorpion is hunting, it uses its pincers or it flicks its tail to pierce its prey and inject it with liquid venom. This poison stops the prey from getting away, and when the scorpion is attacked by a bigger predator, such as a snake or a bird, the scorpion can use its painful sting to defend itself. Then, the scorpion escapes. Fact, baby scorpions called scorplings, oh, that's cute, ride on their mother's back until they develop their armor coat and produce venom. Scorplings, that sounds like a pet name. If you had a scorpion's tail, you'd never have to wait in line. Yeah, I'd be nervous behind a scorpion, frankly. Thresher shark. A thresher shark's tail isn't just for swimming. It also makes this shark a super hunter. 
The top half of a thresher shark's tail is extra long. For some adults, this part of their tail can be as long as their body, up to about 20 feet. Whoa. When it goes hunting, the thresher shark swims at a school of small fish. Then it whips its long tail over its head, striking some of the fish. Smack! Just like that, the stunned fish become dinner. Fact. A thresher shark swings its tail in just one third of a second, about as quick as the human eye blinks. If you had a thresher shark's tail, you'd be a home run hero. Can you imagine? I never thought about a shark with such a long tail. That's impressive. Giraffe. A giraffe's tail is a record holder, including the tail tuft. It can be up to eight feet long. That makes it the longest tail of any land mammal. The bottom half of a giraffe's tail is a long tuft of hair, but the top half is muscle and separates tail bones. These tail bones allow the giraffe to bend at each joint, which is where the bones meet. So a giraffe can swish its tail to swat away any biting bugs with its long tail tuft. Fact, every giraffe has its own unique spot pattern all over its body, including on its long tail. If you had a giraffe's tail, you wouldn't need a paintbrush to paint a masterpiece. There's our giraffe with its gorgeous tail. And there we are painting the Mona Lisa. I don't know if I'd want my tail painting. Rattlesnake. A rattlesnake has a built-in alarm system at the tip of its tail. When the snake shakes its tail, it makes a noisy rattle. That means, leave me alone. As a baby, a rattler has just a button at its tail tip. The rattle forms and grows longer as the rattlesnake gets older. Every time the snake grows and sheds its old skin, a new segment is exposed at the base of the tail, adding another part to the rattle. Fact, when a rattlesnake, when a rattlesnake rattles, it shakes its tail back and forth about 60 times a second. If you had a rattlesnake's tail, you'd have the perfect instrument to play in a band. There you go. That's what I would use my snake rattle for, being the percussion in a band. Beaver. A beaver's tail is a broad, flat paddle covered with leathery scales. An adult beaver's tail can be more than a foot long, about a third of the length of its body. In the water, a beaver's tail is the perfect rudder, steering the animal while it swims with its webbed back feet. When a predator comes close, a beaver smacks its tail hard on the water's surface to warn its family there's danger and hopefully scare away the predator. Fact, on land, a beaver uses its strong stiff tail as a prop while munching leaves or gnawing down trees. If you had a beaver's tail, you'd make the biggest splash in the pool. Here's our beaver. And here's our tail. Tokaya gecko. A tokaya gecko is usually able to hide from predators like birds or snakes. But when it's spotted and a predator grabs the reptile by the tail, the gecko uses its best escape trick, dropping off the end of its tail. The nerves in the tip of the tail make it wiggle, even though it's no longer on the gecko. While the predator checks out the piece of lost tail, the gecko makes its getaway. Fact, the Tokaya gecko regrows its lost tail in less than a month and can drop it again if it needs to. If you had a Tokaya gecko's tail, no one would stop you from scoring a touchdown. Spider monkey. A spider monkey can use its long tail to grab something and hold on. The monkey's tail helps it stay safe as it swings through the trees. The t its tail muscles are so strong that the spider monkey can even dangle by just the end of its tail. It's the perfect safety line while climbing with all four feet or when there's no place to sit while the monkey is out on a limb picking fruit, picking fruit to eat. Fact, a baby spider monkey wraps its tail around its mother like a seatbelt when it rides on her back. 
If you had a spider monkey tail, you'd be a star trapeze performer. There you go. Everybody should try trapeze art. Crocodile. A crocodile's tail is nearly half its body length and is packed with muscles. It sweeps its powerful tail side to side to propel itself forward through the water while its back feet steer. A crocodile can swim as fast as 18 miles per hour this way. For a crocodile, speed means catching a fast fish dinner or charging fast enough to surprise something much bigger like a baby hippo. Fact. A crocodile can use its tail to launch out of the water and snatch birds or monkeys from overhanging tree branches. If you had a crocodile tail, you could swim your way to Olympic gold. Check out that crocodile snapping right there. There we go. Red kangaroo. A red kangaroo uses its tail like a fifth leg while hopping. To hop, the kangaroo leans forward until its front feet are touching the ground. Next, propped up by its tail, the kangaroo swings both of its hind feet ahead of its front legs. And when it springs forward, its big tail keeps it balanced. Hopping this way, can red kangaroos can have been clocked traveling as fast as 40 miles per hour. Fact. When a male red kangaroo is fighting for a mate, he balances on his tail and tiptoes to look bigger. If you had a red kangaroo's tail, you'd have no trouble standing out on the dance floor. There they are, arguing. A wild animal's tail could be fun for a while, but you don't need a tail to swat flies or scare off predators. You can get by without a tail to hang from or to help you swim faster than your dinner. And you're great on your own, even without a fan tail to show off. But if you could keep a wild animal tail for more than a day, what kind would be right for you? So what would you think? What kind of tail would you do and why? What, what hobbies, what interests do you have? Luckily, you don't have to choose. You don't need a tail because you already have a tailbone that is right for your body. Your tailbone is exactly what you need to sit down or stand up straight. It's important for riding a bike or even sitting cross-leg on the floor. What's special about your tailbone? Your tailbone, also called the coccyx, is the name for the last few bones of your spine. This group of bones, plus the muscle, tendons, and ligaments that attach to it form a support system for your body. The ligaments are tough bands that hook the individual bones in your tailbone together. The tendons are flexible bands that attach the muscle to the bone. This tailbone system works with the lower backbone and hip bones, pelvis, to, break, uh, to brace your back. That supports your body weight so you can sit up straight, even when there isn't anything to lean against. Your tailbone needs you. Like any bone in your body, your tailbone can break. Falling backward and landing hard on your rear end can do it. Your tailbone can also be hurt by sports, especially those that require sitting while moving, such as rowing or biking, bike riding. An injured tailbone makes standing and sitting very painful. Here are some ways to protect your tailbone. Don't sit sideways on just one hip. Sit straight and tall with your shoulders back. Be extra careful when walking on slippery surfaces when you might fall, like ice or wet floors. Don't sit for too long. Try to get up and move about every 20 minutes. So when you're working at a computer or whatever, every 20 minutes or so, you should get up and take a quick stretch break. It's healthier. Alrighty. And that is the end of our book. I hope you enjoyed this information text. 
um, and the fiction and nonfiction pieces. There is a whole series of these awesome books, and I'll catch you with another book next time. Bye.